This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Famous. Potatoes on the license plate slogan. Oh, and Pierce Brosnan. And Tater Tots. This is an extravaganza. And for that, kids, you get some jazz hands. Yeah, <laughs> with extravaganza. <laughs> Funny and also cute and crafty. I hope that our show will be judged by its totality. <laughs> right. And not little 10-second snippets. We got a little wrapped up in the titty milk, though. IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Okay, this week, finally back on schedule. You may dispense with the pleasantries, Commander. <laughs> I'm here to put you back on schedule. <laughs> we'll get rid of that uh, first thing. I love it. Ah, you know, la- last week, the, the holidays, even last week a little bit, you know, everybody's off schedule. The kids are off schedule. I'm off schedule. Everybody I'm working with is off schedule. Mm-hmm. And it is, I think I referred to it last time as a godless, lawless time. <laughs> Every day is Blur's Day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I what day get... is it? I Here's the thing. And of course, I'm still working throughout all of that. Uh-huh. And man, I didn't get anything done. It was so hard like to go into work and like actually have to do a task was just a challenge. <laughs> yeah. I, and I mean, even our show didn't get fully edited last time. <laughs> no. We'll blame it all on the editor, <laughs> lazy bum. <laughs> Um, yeah, and you know what? Honestly, everyone deserves a break. So, so now it's back to rainbows and glitter and unicorns and sparkles and and I'm sunshine. <laughs> if you're looking for that, you're in the wrong place. Well, I would like to think of us as the antidote to toxic positivity. Yeah, just you know, we'll uh, we'll say things like we're just having a conversation. That's what we do. We have a conversation on tape. I think we're very refreshing realists. On on that note, though. Like at some point, like we're just having fun. We're just fooling around here. But at some point, are we going to have to have that responsibility? Will you put your show on the internet for all to see? You shouldn't have told the baby to swallow a gumball or whatever. I'm trying to think of some something terrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what, folks? We are <laughs> only here for the jokey jokes. So if you take only any- that. if you take anything that we say too seriously, you are a fool. Right. Sorry. Maybe you are the jokey joke. You're, you're the person that warning labels should be removed for, so that we'll just sort out the gene pool. Right, right. That joke. All right. You hey, know, some of our jokes are even original. <laughs> yeah, on occasion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just today I was working with a kid, and um, he said some like he was clearly like kind of joking around, but I wasn't totally sure. So I was like, "Okay, are you being serious, or is that a little jokey joke?" And he's like, "It's a joke, joke." It's like, no. It's jokey joke. Jokey TM. joke. Get it right, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trademark and copyright Carly Morgan yeah. 2024. <laughs> Just some quick uh, follow-ups. And did, did we shout out? I feel like we missed some shout-outs over the holidays, but if that happened, gosh, we're so sorry. And I mean, we've mentioned that we're completely powered by Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company <laughs> steaks. Oh yeah. And Thor's <laughs> chocolate and mm-hmm. give back soup shack and <laughs> I mean, I think we've said hi to Jess and Kevin and, <laughs> oh, Kevin, I would, th- those those Bible study chocolates that your mom loves so much, those oh. lint batons, uh-huh. we still have a couple left. <laughs> those were so good. I didn't realize they're full of um, sherry. Adult, <laughs> adult beverages. I was like, whoa, that is what I think it is. I mean, it sure does make for a fun Bible study. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and it's not not every religion prohibits alcohol. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what a Christ! <laughs> that's what I was saying. Yeah, some of them actually require some wine. So you know, when I was at so, uh, speaking of com- communion, and also Jesus did turn water into wine. So he did. He gave us a pass. He did. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. And there's a lot of people that think, well, it was more of a watery wine. But there's a lot mm. of people that think um, that wine back then, the ancient Greeks, I, and I think there's proof of this. Or I've been watching mm. too many of my ancient history shows. Right. But it wasn't just fermented grapes. There could have been some herbs in there. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Some ye so, old absinthe. Some psychedelic <laughs> kind of stuff. <laughs> all right. What's that one witch on the island of Crete who turned all the men into pigs? Calypso. Yeah, I think like there was a even back then they had blends of herbs and spices <laughs> that were more than for just KFC. That would explain some some things. <laughs> <laughs> explain a lot of stuff. Funny, funny. Okay. 
<laughs> I promised I wasn't, I'm, and I've already mentioned it in the first five minutes. <laughs> you love it. What can I say? Well, it's just, it's just, it's fascinating to me. Okay. But two shout outs I didn't give last episode that I wanted to, uh, and that's the beauty of a weekly thing is uh, if we miss it the uh, last time, then we'll get it this time. Right. Um, Southeast Idaho Bridal Fair was a huge success from what I hear. And I wanted to shout out two Autumns. Oh, yeah. The first of which is Autumn Beam, wife of one Nick Beam. We called him Ninja Nick back in the day. And by say by we, I mean me. I was the one who said that because he would just, and I think we've mentioned him on the show before. We're oh, still probably. friends. Yeah. This is like over 10 years ago. He'd just sneak around the neighborhood at night plowing everybody's sidewalk. Oh, that's actually really nice. And I, it took me like five or six times before I even, it's that guy. <laughs> I caught him in the act or something. And it just, you know, thanked him profusely. So great people. In fact, his son, Kelton, just got into real estate. Yes. Yeah. Along with Abby. What's up? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we're getting all the shout outs out. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but Autumn runs DIY weddings and events. That's what you search for on Facebook. And I actually think it's a pretty brilliant idea. I mean, it kind of sounds like you do it yourself, though. <laughs> kind of. I just want to know what you're paying her for. And I think you do do it. All yourself. Okay. But she's got the stuff. Oh. Like, okay, I want a silver-themed wedding for 100 people. Well, oh, she's okay. got all the place settings oh, okay. and all the chairs. Okay, yeah. And all the, I think I think they've got trailers or they're getting one or oh, they nice. might even get a soda trailer. But Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, they've been doing it for a few years now and I, mm-hmm. I believe they're expanding this year. But just great people with, yeah, like if, if you're like, okay. If you're kind of a DIYer but still need all the stuff, you need to rent all the stuff, she's got all the stuff. Well, and also, how nice is it that when you're done with the stuff, you don't have to deal with the stuff? Exactly. You just give the stuff back. Exactly. Like, what are those things that you take a picture, a photo backdrop? Yes. You know, you, uh-huh. An entryway into the, if you're going to have an outdoor mm-hmm. wedding. You know, all the all the physical things right, right. that go into hosting a wedding. Well, not to mention like centerpieces and stuff, A, can get really expensive really fast. And B, once you've got, once you've done the wedding, now you've got like 10 lanterns that like, what are you going to do with those? Exactly. You know? This, her business solves that problem. Mm-hmm. DIY weddings and events on Facebook. If you're looking for that. And then there's another autumn. So that's autumn beam spelled autumn like the season. Then there's autumn with a Y instead of the second you, am I spelling Autumn in my head right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Autumn. Okay. And she does beauty by Autumn. She does hair and makeup for weddings. You know, I make it a point to support my friends. And so whenever I see beauty by Autumn with a Y, uh, her posts, yeah, she's like all over the East Idaho and I think into Jackson area, Wyoming area. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And so she Man, does- I wouldn't be willing to travel that far. <laughs> she does makeup and hair for weddings all over the place. Cool. You okay. You can hit her up on Facebook as well. And then also want to shout out uh, to a buddy, Jacob Meldrum, who I hope people don't mind me using their full names. If you do, let me know. Uh, (laughs) But Jacob is, he's the, we mentioned him in the very talented 2023 Mm -hmm. season list of performers. He was Gomez Adams in um, The Adams Family. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oh, and he came to see my silly thing too. Right. And he was also nicely, nicely in Guys and Dolls with you. Yes. Yeah. He's gangbusters. Super nice guy. Anyway, he heard us talking about the Hans Christian Andersen board game. Uh huh. You clued me into this in the Christmas season. Yes. And because um, I was talking about, I was bagging on him. Of course, <laughs> I was. Hans Christian Andersen's The Fir Tree, where he basically anthropomorphizes a fir tree and makes you feel sorry for it as it's burning as firewood. <laughs> it's just, it's just a terrible story. It's super sad. And also, <laughs> as I mentioned, Hans Christian Andersen was super sad. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> now I I think I had all we were going to talk about it last episode. Yes. Well, and then we completely spaced it. Last episode was just a train wreck shit show. We and, were having a nice fun New Year's Eve, and yeah. we were just yeah. Sorry, well, not New sorry. Day. I was busy gaining yeah. another ten pounds. Yeah. And um and we had a blast. Yeah, we and were, we were being... finding a work life balance, and <laughs> we, we were being merry and bright. <laughs> yes, we were. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but. Jacob reminded me, hey, you got to talk about this because it's a, when we, now it's not a board game necessarily. Would you call it a, it's a RPG? Yes, it's an RPG. So I was wrong. I thought it was a board game. Um, But once he sent this to us, 
I remembered it because I hadn't seen it for like years. You know, I just remember seeing it on the internet once and I was like, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I love that so much. And I thought about it all the time after that, but I hadn't seen it since then, you know, and- RPG is role-playing game, by the way, kids. Yes. (laughs) So like D&D. Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons is what that means. Only with less satanic overtones (laughs) to parents over 60. So first off, it's called Trapped in Your House Due to Hans Christian (laughs) Andersen. And it's basically just one sheet. Uh And uh, okay, so basically you have three health scores. And if any of those go to zero, then you lose. Okay, And like any other RPG, the the thing you want to do every time is roll a natural 20. Right, exactly. Uh, So for example, uh, Charles Dickens could be dealing with uh, Hans Christian Andersen on his front lawn with the little matchstick girl who dies on his front lawn in front of him. (laughs) And that would deplete your obsession and add to your scandal. (laughs) Okay, right. Gotcha. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So you have to keep all three of those balanced. (laughs) Yes. I guess. Okay. Yeah. So... Basically, huh. you just sort of roll and you see what you get, and it's it's just super funny, and it's always some crazy scenario, and uh, yeah, you just uh, see if you win against Han Christian Anderson and his obsession. And what's so cool about this is it's the guy Oliver Darkside, perhaps not his real name, has published it free on the internet, and then ha- you know, and you can it's a PDF or a JPEG or a ping that you can download. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's got his little Patreon link right there. And I think the suggested amount or the actual amount that he would like you to pay um, is uh, $3.95 or something like that. I don't know if that's euros or pounds or yeah. USD, but I think that's really cool. So if we do actually play this RPG on your B-Day, we'll go Patreon the guy <laughs> what he deserves. I would love what, that. What he's asking for it. Yeah. But yeah, I I think that'd be great. There are lots of fun little, I mean, he really did a good job. There are lots of fun little callbacks to Hans Christian Andersen stuff. And I just think it's great. Well, and I love smart asses on the internet. (laughs) How many times am I going to harp on that? But way to go, Oliver Darkside. And also, how creative that he heard of this situation and his first thought was, Let's make a game out of that. This needs to be a board game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Last follow-up, you taught me how to pronounce Taika Waititi, the, the name, ooh, a couple of years ago when we first started started watching What We Do in the Shadows mm-hmm. and Our what Flag else? Means Death. Our Flag Means Death. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm wrong, apparently. <laughs> well, I don't know if you're wrong. Let's, let's, let's work this out here. Because, okay, so I just caught up with The Simpsons. Season mm-hmm. 32 is on Hulu, and- he was in an episode as a guest star. Which is so cool. Yeah, first of all, hats off to The Simpsons, because way to recognize. Right? this guy. And the thing is, he hasn't just done quirky New Zealand humor that's not appropriate for network or cable television. Mm-hmm. He's He directed, like, uh, didn't he direct one of the, the Captain Thors? America? Thor, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Ragnarok, as a matter of fact. Yeah, this guy is hot. Yeah. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah. Commodity. Uh, he was also the bad guy in Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds, and he was great at it. Why didn't I connect those dots? Because you're dumb. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's the computer guy yeah. in the trench coat that looks yes. like he belongs in the Matrix. Yes. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, the one who looks really pretentious. That was a surprisingly good movie, too. Right. You know, I really didn't expect it to not suck. Yeah. I, I thought for sure I was going to watch it and be like, okay, that's a... But then I was like, okay, this is actually really cute. I would totally watch this again. And with all the copyright swapping that's going on where one company will say, yeah, you can use our stuff for that if we can use your stuff for this. Mm -hmm. I love seeing all the brands together. It reminds me a lot of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yes. Which is one of my absolute most favorite movies ever. It's so fun. It was pretty groundbreaking that Warner Brothers cartoons characters were in the same movie as Mickey Mouse. Right, right. I don't know if people can appreciate that, but at the time it was like, what? Uh Uh-huh. This is so cool. Yeah, specifically that scene with Mickey and Bugs parachuting down with, um, what's the the detective's name? Elmer Fudd? No, No, uh, the the... Oh, Eddie Valens. Bob Hoskins. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with Eddie Valens as he's falling off the building. Valiant. Hilar- oh, you're right. Valiant. It? It, is, so. it is. It is. Yep. Yeah. So Taika Waititi is in an episode of The Simpsons this season, just a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago by now. And he pronounces his own name, I think. First, Lisa Simpson says it, and she says Taika Waititi. Mm-hmm. 
with the emphasis on the first syllable. Because mm-hmm. I've been saying Taika Waititi. Right. And I think later he says, he almost puts the emphasis on both. Taika Waititi. Oh, okay. Anyway. Well, let's just say it's the bastardized American version of his name. I think he may have actually had something to do with the script because he plays sort of a devilish bad guy. Oh. Spoiler alert. But um, it's been called a cringeworthy misstep by the internet. Oh, no. Yeah. Which but, I'm kind of shocked if he was the one who was dealing with the script because if he was, it'd be hilarious and great like everything else he touches. Right. I would think so. You know? And I've been kind of sensitive to cringeworthy missteps because I know we've had a few already. Oh, sure. We've been doing this. Is this number 26? <clears throat> Holy cow. Yeah. This this is our six-month anniversary spectacular. Oh, wow. This is an extravaganza. And for that, kids, you get some jazz hands. <laughs> yeah, with extra vaganza. <laughs> Just pour all the vaganza over the top. That sounds dirty. Shake out the can. <laughs> Yeah. The can of Vaganza. <laughs> yeah, shake out the can onto the Vaganza. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I... <laughs> I really wanted to be good this episode. You know what? Forget it. We're just going to fuck yeah. it. Let's yeah. just accept our lot and our role. We can be the devilish bad society. boys of this episode. <laughs> Let's play the exciting new game show. <laughs> That's a concept we introduced last episode. <laughs> Um, which major breaking news story should we talk about? The Epstein list or uh, those cups from Target going <laughs> out the door? Uh, I say, ¿Por qué no los dos? Sure, but which let's one start, first? You know what? Let's start with the cups, only because they're pink. Okay. <laughs> so Stanley apparently is a company that doesn't... There's a, there's a Stanley that makes power tools, right? Yes. Or regular tools. Like, I, I, I swear yeah. I have Stanley screwdrivers yeah, absolutely. in my drawer out there, mm-hmm. but there's also a Stanley that makes cups. Yes. They may yeah. have been the first one to Yeti. make, <laughs> like, the insulated. They've been around mm-hmm. for over 100 years. Yeah. I didn't know that. Sorry, Stanley, for not having <laughs> brand awareness before, but I sure do now, and maybe that's why you did it. You know, the funny thing is, so I have a friend who has a Stanley cup as her, like, main tumbler that she carries around, like, we... Like all yeah, of us have now. Here, we'll show off ours. You know, it's sort of funny because I think everyone sort of has a special cup that they carry around, kind of like their cell phone. Mm-hmm. And like, you can sort of mm-hmm. identify the person's belongings based on the cup. Yeah, yeah. Like just today. We can show off your phone too. Yeah. You can definitely see what pile of stuff is Carl's. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's the pink stuff. You know, it's kind of funny. I actually stayed in a hotel room with my cousin and all of her stuff was like, black and like very you know moody and then all my stuff was like bright pink yeah <laughs> and she actually like took a picture of it because she thought it was really funny am i the male version of your cousin <laughs> uh, I might be. In, in a way kind of dark more conservative than I mean, liberal i certainly like you both very much <laughs> <laughs> yeah but anyway um so yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of funny like just today i actually had a coworker. Uh, who left some stuff in a room and my other coworker looked at me and she was like, Hey, whose stuff is that? And I kind of looked at it and I didn't recognize the backpack. I didn't recognize the to go box, but I did recognize the cup. And I was like, Oh, that's Courtney's. Okay. (laughs) And I thought that was kind of (laughs) funny. Well, so maybe the point we've accidentally made is people can be identified by their uh, belongings, by their accoutrement. Yeah. Cell phone, wallet, purse, man Mm -hmm. purse. Right. That's Indiana Jones, and that's a satchel. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, and big shout out to my friend Ben, who finally did watch Indiana Jones Dial of Destiny and said, dude, thank you. I was going to pass on it, but it was so good. Well, I mean, after Crystal Skull, I I don't blame yeah, him for I was being too. skeptical. I was too, but I'm- But it was really good. Blindly loyal to the brand. Right. So Stanley, I think, probably got put on a lot of- mom's radars when they had a promotion last year with starbucks oh yeah uh-huh. for some mugs they did a thing for tar- and of course this is we're reporting this in six weeks away from valentine's day uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> because really i mean like december 26th all the oh. shelves were pink and red yes which also this is my favorite time of year to buy like normal living room decor <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. You got six weeks to make it happen, baby. Oh, I know. I'm so excited Get about all it. all your pink coasters. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, 
Coasters. <laughs> Coasters, cupcake uh, cups. Yeah. Um, well, cupcake, <laughs> cupcake pans. As a matter of fact, my favorite cupcake pans are Valentine's ones, and they're heart-shaped, and they're so cute. They're little silicone cups. That mm-hmm. are, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, that's a really good. I hadn't thought of that. I should uh, I should go look around at some of the sales on February fifteenth, and there's mm-hmm. there's your Christmas. There you go. That's a great idea. <laughs> Ooh, that's planning. I'm yeah. so planning. So Stanley had a limited run of these pink and red tumblers cups, like mm-hmm. your Yeti or your whatever. I think they were more of a hot pink than a red. Am I crazy? I thought I saw it in two colors, but I could be wrong. It okay. could have been two different websites with two different filters on their photos. I don't right, know. Right, right. But I, yeah, I, I don't know. They said love on them. I mean, I, uh-huh. it's, your, it's your, if you got one, I'm sorry for saying what I'm about to say. It's your basic bitch mug. Hey, first you off, know? <laughs> there is nothing wrong with being a basic bitch. No, no. And I've talked there, to, yeah, the I am reason, much the same. <laughs> right. The reason that stuff is popular is because it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is, I actually heard about these quite a while ago because I happen to be part of a Facebook group called Fifty Shades of Pink because I <laughs> love pink so much. So people will just post aesthetic photos of pink stuff and they'll sort of tip each other off if there's like really nice pink products out. Like when Paris Hilton came out with her line of cookware, that's beautiful and all pink and like Honestly, I kind of want some. We're not going to make any jokes about Fifty Shades of Pink? No? Okay, go. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Just checking. <laughs> I know. It's it's a questionable <laughs> name, but I get it. I get where they were going. Paris Hilton cookware. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, it's kind of funny that they'll tip each other off to good products and stuff. And those Stanley Cups came up in my feed like a month ago. And so there was this sort of Black Friday-esque rush yes on these things at target stores yeah apparently they're like incredibly hard to find now i'll bet you you can get them on ebay for four times as much probably how much do they retail for couldn't have been more Uh, than like i mean couldn't have been more than 50 but i would say not even more than 20 right i think that my friend bought her big stanley cup for like 25 bucks all right somewhere in there i could be an old person who doesn't know the price of things well, i be, remember when milk was a dollar right well and to be fair i got my very cute pink uh mana apparently is the name brand of this cup from uh ross for 12 dollars like mana from which heaven. i think is amazing especially because my other tumbler that was this size and shape and you know sim- similarly beautiful was 40 Okay. So, you know, and actually I think this is a little bit bigger than my old tumbler. So, you know, for it's a good about size. A fourth of the price. As somebody who has assisted you uh putting ice in it before not assisted, <laughs> I've been your little servant <clears throat> to put ice in it. Yeah. You can still put a twelve ounce beverage in there too, like uh-huh. a Gatorade or whatever. That's what you have in there now. It currently is, yeah. The cucumber lime, the best one, by the way. Is it the G Zero? It is. It is. Now, here's the thing. The fully loaded cucumber lime does taste better. It just does. Of course it does, because it's got a bunch of sugar in it. But if you're trying to cut back on the calories and you also want it to taste good, the G Zero rocks so much and it's just fine. It is G it is Glicious. Yeah, it is Glicious. <laughs> you can steal that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That's a great little I'm starting to think campaign. I'm the guy that comes up with slogans that other people have already thought of. Mm. Remember Remember my genius, brilliant from Bean to the Bar? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thor's Chocolate is already using that. Maybe you're a basic bitch. Maybe I am. <laughs> I'm starting to think I am. I'll own it. <laughs> yeah. I, I do need a few more data points, though. You know me. Let's do a little more research. <laughs> right, right. But then will I sort of like quantum physics, merely by observing it, change the outcome? Will I be like Ooh. trying hard not to be basic? For maybe for the, the, the study period that we said. <laughs> okay. I now I'm we'll overthinking see. it. There's you know no what? such thing. I'll do a random study that I won't tell you about. There you go. You'll never know. It could be anywhere. I mean, look, I let's okay, let's let's talk about me for a minute. Yeah. But enough about me. What do you think about me? <laughs> no. Uh, I like Taylor Swift. Yeah. Okay, who doesn't? Come on. I love ripping off logos. <laughs> yeah. You love a good logo. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> You're sorry, a total I'm, brand whore. I'm wearing a yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but for like like ridiculous stuff, you know, stuff that oh. everybody likes. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm looking around this room, but this the studio is actually pretty blank. Your Yeti cup? I have a Yeti cup and an mm-hmm. iPhone and mm-hmm. Sony MDR 7506 studio monitor headphones. Wow, you said that really fast. Yeah, because <laughs> it's the only headphone I use. We're talking right. into Shure SM7B microphones. Uh, that blanket that Rango is sitting his cute little puppy ass on. Mm-hmm. Is that very specific one that you were so excited about the brand of? Oh, I don't yeah. remember the mar- the brand though. Well, I got you one uh-huh. that you ended up giving to a friend, and then another one that was the right shade of pink. Okay. Yes, that's what we're dealing with here. I and didn't. then I got me too. <laughs> I didn't give it to my friend. What you did? What? Because you took it into my room to compare it to my stuff, and you realized it was too pink. Oh. Me and my friend were both standing there. No, it wasn't pink enough. No, it was too brightly oh, pink. Okay. The, so it, it was the dusty rose one oh. that we ended up doing with my old comforter. Right. Now the because I'm because I'm a dude. Right. I'm a basic bitch. Well, dude. and also you bought it offline. Who or right. online? Yes, it was yeah. really tough. Yeah, you I was can't doing guess. it on my couch without a frame of reference. Right. That's exactly. pink to me. Yeah, exactly. But, but no, um, gentlemen, just so you know, there's a difference. Some might even say a huge difference between pink, hot pink, and dusty rose. Okay, there is a huge difference between a hot pink and dusty rose, but pink and dusty rose, maybe not. Okay. Anyway, but the point I'm getting at is uh, you, so you saw that you, well, you saw that in your opinion, it was not the right shade of pink. And I was like, oh, technically it's not, but I was happy to take it. I wasn't going to say anything. I was just grateful for it because it was nice. And you just sort of turned and you were like, oh, this is the wrong one. Hey friend, do you want this? And I'll just get Carly a new one. And she's like, yeah, sure. And it was, it, it was 20 bucks. Right. So it's like, I'm not, you can spend 20 bucks and get the wrong thing or 40 bucks and get the right thing. Yeah. I, the answer is pretty clear in my mind. And that's fair. And also realistically, I would have just kept them both. Well, and here's how I knew this whole thing came full circle. So I first saw those pink tumblers on my Facebook p- feed from that one uh, group that I'm in. And then just yesterday... I saw a meme about that cup from a totally <laughs> different group. From your meme page. Group. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was something like, um, I don't know, basic witches or something like that. It, it was some like really random or like, you know, girls being girls page. And it was something like, I'm the only one who doesn't give a f- about the Stanley Cup. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. So it's kind of funny. Oh, and the Ice Palace Idaho is open now. Oh, nice. That, that's the one that used to be the LaBelle Lake Ice Palace, mm-hmm. and it's in the same place by LaBelle Lake in Rigby, if you know where that is, uh-huh. just down from Blue Heron Inn, that bed and breakfast that's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's on the you know, east side of the freeway, right? Do I have that right? In fact, we I went so. and looked. We helped a uh, client there we earlier did. last year. Yeah. And you know, I'd like to try out Blue Heron at some point. We should go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And while you're there, you got to like- Go into Manan to the Teton house. Right, and, right. Yeah, just take the little back roads drive. I mean, it's it's a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe not in the winter. You just go straight to the Ice Palace. But they're open. So they opened on December 30th. And they just, yeah, they recognize, hey, we're a little late. But it's been a warm winter. And yeah, it has. It has. I was genuinely wondering if they'd be able to open because of it. Do There's you, been so little snow. Right. And do you, okay, do you remember we earlier last August, in mm-hmm. August of 2023, that's when the Old Farmer's Almanac comes out with their winter weather predictions. Right, right. For certain regions or zones, and I already forget which one we are. 13? Uh-huh. 13, I think. But um, I think I made a joke like lucky number 13 or something. <laughs> or or yeah. something. But so far, it's been really mild. I'm glad we got to have a white Christmas. Me too. But I do see, oh, it's a coming, kids. A lot of Probably a lot of people that, um, perhaps some of our clients that moved here this year. <laughs> And think, oh, this Idaho winter's a cakewalk. I don't know what they're talking about. Right, right. Oh, I thought it'd be so much worse. Actually, to be fair, they're probably like, oh, no, this is horrible. I hate this. And then it's going to really hit them. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Yeah. The only people that'll be pleasantly surprised are people who moved here from Milwaukee (laughs) or Chicago. Mm Because that, boy, that lake effect, Midwest, humid. Wow. That's just, it's Mm bone-chillingly cold there. It is here, too. If you're not careful, but yeah, in the next 10 days, I see the very first, mm-hmm. um, in the 10 day forecast, the very first single digit day coming up. Oh, wow. So today was 32 and mm-hmm. it's just going to steadily decline for the next 10 oh, days. That's so depressing. <laughs> you know, this whole winter, there's been maybe like one or two times I've actually had to put on a real coat 
Other than that, I've just worn cardigans yeah. the entire time, and it's been fine. Even today, I was like walking by the river for a good solid 20 minutes in a dress, some flats, and a cardigan. Crazy and yeah, lady. my toes were cold by the time I was done, but it wasn't extreme. It was fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm not looking forward to those really cold days. So search for them at the Ice Palace, Idaho. Again, that's the former LaBelle Lake Ice Palace. Oh, and then, uh, all right. I think I went to phase four stereo once in my life because I just, as weird as this sounds, I'm really not a big audiophile. Right. I, I don't care if I can, like, so long as I can hear it in my car, I don't need like bass subwoofers. I don't need like my tires to shake when the bass hits or something like yeah. that. Like that's too much. But I know I had phase four stereo put in at least one car stereo in my life. Cause mm -hmm. how could you not? Cause they've been in business in East Idaho for like 50 years. Right. Right. They were on the Northgate mile. They're now in Ammon mm -hmm. and um, they've done something really super cool. I just a, over the years, the owner last name Bailey and I, I actually David Bailey. Uh -huh. I went to school with his kid Kelsey. I think he was he had the coolest sound system in school. Of course, of course, shocking. But yeah, I'm not an audiophile. I I think that a 44.1 16-bit stereo 320 kbps MP3 sounds as good as you know compact disc. You know what I mean? Or a flack or a no. Definitely not an audiophile, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I just, but yeah, I, I get it. So, so I feel it's like, oh wait, here's a here's an Idaho Falls institution that I need to go to again because they've got a brand new reason to visit them. Mm -hmm. They have an electronics museum, which is so cool. This would be so cool to see in person. And also, can I just say, there's absolutely no way in hell that you can walk in there and not feel super duper old. Yeah, I bet, right? Because like, realistically, electronics in mass have been available since like what the twenties, a hundred years maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, that's not a very long time. Nope. If we're thinking about a museum, right. You know? But, yeah. <laughs> but so, so yeah, I'm sure some of it is museum. This in it's Indiana Jones. This belongs in a museum quality. <laughs> right. And then some of it is just like, Oh, that's vintage. Oh, I remember I had one of those. Right. Yeah. Like a Sony discman or whatever. I swear if I see a Tamagotchi there, I'm going to lose it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be done. <laughs> I am See, and I don't know. And this is why we need to go. I imagine it's more like a, um, audio or maybe AV audio video. Yeah electronics collection but maybe it does have <laughs> tamagotchis in the first pong right no i'm you know? sure i'm sure it's mostly like audio stuff but you know yeah but it just it's so cool and even though you're in ammon phase four their new location is or their newer location they've been gone from their northgate mile location for a while so if you don't know they're in the okay remember the old kmart in ammon boy there's a couple of old kmart <laughs> buildings here in town yeah, there are old ernst buildings <laughs> Huh. The old Kmart building, now the new U-Haul Center. Mm -hmm. They're in the building off to the east of that, off to the right. Right. Um, and they have this electronics museum. And that's why Phase 4 Stereo of Ammon. <laughs> but for 50 years in Idaho Falls. You are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5, whoosh, 21 Finger Gun Salute. Pew, pew. And Chef's Kiss to you. To you. What, a, what a cool way to... <laughs> honor your own business you know yeah yeah look at all this outdated stuff that we used to think was state of the art well it used to be state of the art yeah. but yeah it's crazy man times an arrow ever marching forward you know it kind of reminds me of the oddities museum in um shadow domain oh yes yeah, yeah. that's this uh, shadow domain is on uh, broadway uh -huh. downtown across the street from the keltish it's right well it's Two doors down from uh, the art of the auditorium, I was oh. going to say. Funny enough, literally right next to it, I kid you not, is a Christian bookstore. Oh wow! <laughs> which, which so it's God of... and Satan sort of duking it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I will say one window is a lot more fun than the other. <laughs> Sorry, yes, but one leads to eternal damnation. <laughs> <laughs> While we're handing out awards, want to mention this billboard from oh, yeah. Tag and Go Car Wash. <laughs> it's for a car wash. Uh -huh. And their uh, their statement is, faster than a Rexburg engagement. And sorry for potato quality photo. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but that's what you get when it was taken uh, across the other side of the freeway. Right, right. Well, and can I say non-Idaho potato quality? Right. right. Every right. every potato other than Idaho quality. This ain't yeah. no golden Idaho russet. No, yeah, no, no. no. This is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is some crap from West Virginia. How Ew. fast... <laughs> okay, how fast is a car wash? Five to ten minutes. Right. <laughs> how fast is a Rexburg engagement? Five to ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, I think they're right. <laughs> I think that is truth in advertising. I will say there's a reason they call it BYUIDU. Oh, do they? They Oh, you didn't know that? I've never heard that. Oh, that's like what that's always been the joke ever since I was in high school. Oh man, that's what I missed. Yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Um well and also <laughs> and I truth in advertising. <laughs> right, right. Well, and I worked in the wedding industry. I saw a lot of people coming through getting wedding dresses and you know, I'd ask all the fun little questions. Oh, how'd you meet? How long have you guys been together? Da da da. And I will say I did notice a stark difference between the people who were from BYU versus the people who weren't in their engagement times. A lot of them were like, oh, yeah, we've been dating for like three, four months and we're going to get married in like three or four months. Well, I know <laughs> when you're younger, uh, time seems to mm -hmm. three months seems like an eternity. Well, and you know what? Sometimes it works. Actually, pretty often they make it work. You know, I mean, look at my mom and dad. They got married super young, still together. Yeah, we touched on this last episode when we were talking about the bridal fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I forgot about the song in one of my my favorite movie of all time, Pulp Fiction, uh -huh. uh, where John Travolta and Uma Thurman dance to Chuck yes. Berry's You Never Can Tell. C'est la vie, c'est the old folks. Goes to show you never can tell. That's the one. Yep. <laughs> Such a right good song. I don't hit my mic. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I've got the short hair now, too. <laughs> <laughs> can you do the whole thing again with your fingers like this so we can use it in the clip at the beginning of the show? Yeah. There it is. Okay. Yeah, right? All right. <clears throat> well, and you know, a big reason why they have their engagement so short is because if they're not careful, it could lead to soaking. Oh, right. Yes. You don't want that to happen. No. Right. No. Or gazing. or <laughs> <right>. Marinating. <laughs> is that? No. That's not... That's when I haven't heard that. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of, it's the same thing. <laughs> All right. We'll get off of this as soon as yeah. we get onto it. Yeah. Oh, wait, there's another one. What's that one? It's like soaking. Which is what a brand new Rexburg husband does. Jumping, I think. I hope that our show will be judged by its totality. <laughs> right. And not little 10 second snippets we do here and there. I guarantee if we ever get big <laughs> enough, if anyone cares about us enough, someday there will be a video compilation of stuff like that. Oh, there's going to be a... Proving that Mike and Carly are Satanists. Yeah, there's going to be a super cut one <laughs> yeah. day. I love super cuts, man. There's, in fact, I just saw one. I should have saved it, but didn't. There's this British guy who I guess kind of mumbles and starts to make his point. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm not even sure who he is, uh -huh. but it's hilarious. Yeah. That's and funny. And it's 60 seconds. If I could put it on a loop, it might even put me to sleep because it's really, oh, nice it's just monotone. really this, this slow flow of. Yeah. Mumbles and that sort of British, and, that sort yeah, of British yeah, so guy thing. Yeah, yeah, look, oh, yeah, so, oh, God, look the queen, pip pip spot of tea. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, oh my! I need a biscuit with that crumpet. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I need to take a lift to my flat. <laughs> okay. Um, where were we? <laughs> Making fun of the Brits. <laughs> Face for stereo is I F A F. Yeah, well deserved. And you know who's not IFAF? One of my childhood heroes, Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. I, hmm, he had sorry. a bit of a boner a couple of weeks ago yeah. where he went off the trails and could have ended up as hot pot stew. All I'm saying is. As Remington Steel Tea. Of all of the people, 007 ought to know that you stay on track, stay on task. Yeah. You but know? 007 sometimes breaks the laws. I get it. But also only because M said it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he had all the Q gear to help yeah. him out. Yeah. He has a license to kill, so it's fine. And let's not forget the GoldenEye theme yes. playing in the background. I'm so glad there's GoldenEye. And let me tell you why. First of all, the N64 game. Mm. Oh, I have. <laughs> I, I actually oh, yeah. think I still have that. Best N64 game of all time other yeah. than Donkey Kong Country, maybe? What? Oh, maybe. But- That's um, good. <laughs> I always really loved the original Mario Party. That was my favorite game, and it still is to this very day. Yeah. Yeah. Arguably, yeah. Can't I can't go against that. But 
I so when I we've talked about the panel in my head. The, yeah. the first time I ever saw Remington Steel, I was like, that needs to be the next James Bond. Right. And then they dicked around with um uh who? After Roger Moore, it was was, was it, it Timothy Dalton for a minute? Sean Connery, then Roger Moore, and that's mm-hmm. who I grew up with and I think is the best Bond. <laughs> Go ahead, at me, fight me. I get it. <laughs> sacrosanct to talk or think that way. Uh, and then there was Timothy Dalton and then they brought, but they brought Pierce Brosnan on at the exact wrong time for the franchise because the franchise was going way more action oriented. And remember he oh. had to, like, mm-hmm. like there were no longer bond girls in the sense that they were helpless maidens in, um, in distress, in distress. They were like karate fighters, like Michelle yes. Yeoh uh-huh. or whatever. And, and I'm not saying, Whatever, franchises evolve and sensibilities change. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see him in more like GoldenEye roles, and he didn't really get the chance, and then Daniel Craig came along, so whatever. So anyway, kids, if you want to see a celebrity, Pierce Brosnan (laughs) uh, was cited for walking in thermal areas in the northern part of the park. Mm -hmm. The official charges are violating closures and use limits. That sounds pretty petty. Yes, but since it's since it is in a national park, it's actually a federal offense. Oh technically. man! Yeah, and as a matter of fact, similar violators have gotten up. So let's see. I, th- I think it was like between three to ten uh, days in jail. Whoa! And up to like five hundred dollars in fines. So for Pierce Brosnan, not a huge deal or anything, but technically federal offense. So Ooh, and if he's got to spend time in jail, that just sucks. Well, it's better than spending time in the thermal pit and dying. Yeah, so, it does. you know. Anyway, he's ordered to appear at the Yellowstone Justice Center January 23rd. Did I say that? Yeah. January 23rd. I'll go and spin our IFAF sign <laughs> outside the courthouse <laughs> for all the film cameras rolling there. For the three film cameras that are rolling. <laughs> that is going to look so trashy and I love it. Let's is that, do it. That's totally inappropriate, right? That oh, would be so inappropriate. An appropriation <laughs> of a crowd, right? Yeah, that would be. <laughs> Can you imagine standing outside a courtroom? I mean, it is kind of funny, though. <laughs> Just and I mean, realistically, hanging banners. Kind of, sort of. All of the news cameras do that. They've got their logos on stuff. Yeah, it's true. You know, people in the crowd will see those and be like, oh, that's where I can watch this later. I can I can see if I'm on TV, kids. It does you smack know? a little bit of exploitativism. A little. Maybe a skosh. Maybe a skosh. But also, I was trying we... to say a real word there, but I'm not sure which one it was. <laughs> it's all right. We can add it to the outtakes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, can I just point out, Pierce Brosnan, how dare you? How dare you endanger yourself? Don't you understand that? You're a national we... treasure. You're a beautiful man. Oh, technically, he's Irish, so he's a worldwide treasure. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And like the fact that he put himself in danger and made it so that we might not have Pierce Brosnan <laughs> for as long as we possibly could. You bastard. You beautiful face. Here's the thing he is still fine as hell. Is he? <laughs> Mr. Silver Fox at 70 years old? Would you date a 70 year old? If it was Pierce, Br- if it was Pierce Brosnan, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, I would. Got it. Okay, dude, I'm just saying he's he's still pretty top of the line. Because as much know? as I love Cheryl Teagues, I'm not sure I date her. I mean, does she still look good? <laughs> I don't know. I think I saw a recent picture. And, yeah, she probably. I mean, with all that money, she probably does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And depending on the weather that day, make sure you don't hit a snowplow. Two mm-hmm. snow plows have already been hit this year, this season. You know, that doesn't surprise me. All of the snow that's fallen, I feel, has been especially slick. Like, so slick. Yeah. And, you know? And, well, okay, today, for example, it uh, got a little melty, mm-hmm. and then four or five o'clock comes along and it turns to ice again. Yeah. That's the know, worst. Maybe because it has been an un, uh, unseasonably warm winter. That's why it's been so slick, because it's like half melted. Right, because nothing's going to stop a freezing Idaho winter night. Right, right. But yeah, that sometimes gets bad. But I guess one was hit near American Falls, and one was hit on Highway 26 wow. between Ryrie and Swan Valley uh-huh. on the way to Jackson or on the way back. There we go. So just be careful. Um, I wonder if we're going to do what several states have already done, which is have snowplow naming contests. Oh, I wish we would. You know, like, and I think they, st- the first one I ever heard of, I think was Scotland. When, really? When they named it Plowy McPlowface or something <laughs> like that. 
But uh, Aww, the, that's kind of cute. I love that. The Minnesota <laughs> Department of Transportation ran oh, one of these. Of course, it was Minnesota. Oh yeah, you it, know it's gotta be. <laughs> um, that's Minnesota there. is the Sweden of the United States. Yeah, yeah. and I, I would say, <laughs> except t- for you know all of the cool social reforms that make it so that their ha- their citizens are happy. But whatever. <laughs> Uh, but I would say Wisconsin, a neighboring state, is also very. Any of the Midwest states have that sort of. Oh, you know. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That kind of Letter Kenny accent. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. Uh, the Minnesota Department of Transportation. So M dot. We're I. We have I dot. Mm-hmm. To the south of us is U dot. But M dot said um, that the top voted name was "You're a Blizzard, Harry." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Also, Blizzo. <laughs> oh, funny. Like Lizzo. <laughs> like Lizzo. I love that. Now, here's here's one that I thought was... Okay, but can it play the flute? <laughs> the most creative pun. Right, can yeah. it? She's so good at that. She's so good at that. good at that. Which is a weird thing to be super good at, but yeah. she's super good. Um, <laughs> Cleopatra. <laughs> I actually really like that. Right? That might be my favorite. <laughs> I love a good multisyllabic pun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cleopatra. Man, whoever came up with that, I hope they were patting themselves on the back for the next three days. If you're a Star Wars fan, yeah. Han Snow alone. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, um, Scoop, there it is. <laughs> Sleetwood Mac, Taylor Funny. Drift, Sir Plows a lot. <laughs> and there's just a ton of these. Um, okay, that being said, if you're going to name it, I think you got to paint it. Yeah, I think they do. I think they actually st- somehow stencil it on the on the side of oh, the. Oh, not just the name. Hmm. I think you need to find a way to integrate the image of whatever it is into oh, the snow yeah. plow design. Yeah, didn't we do that in World War II on fighter jets or yeah, yeah, yeah. bomber like, planes? I'm just saying, how funny would it be if if Blizzo mm-hmm. had Lizzo painted on the side and her flute was like the um the, the plow <laughs> was the plow part yeah. you know like the little arms that hold the plow on yeah you know funny and also cute and crafty and put a little uh strike mark on the side in paint for every uh car that hits you yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's fair <laughs> so that you don't become a casualty too oh oh you could be like oh yeah i hit blizzo yeah. <laughs> and like no one's gonna hear the bit they'll just hear the izzo right. yeah yeah <laughs> Other notable ones, Sherlock Snomes. Oh, I love that. A little bit of a stretch, but... Uh, a little bit. It's in, fine. In Boulder, Colorado, Grateful Sled. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and I am grateful for it, so I think that works. Yeah. Uh, um, Edgar Allan Snow, also <gasps> from Michigan. Oh, I love that one. Nevada has one. You know how I feel about Edgar Allan Poe puns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You went one Halloween as? Edgar Allan Ho, and it was terrifying and hilarious. (laughs) It was great. Imagine Carl (laughs) dressed up as a sexy Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah. Here's the thing. Neck down, all sex. Neck up, (laughs) terrifying. Yeah. It's so fun. Horrific. Yeah. I think we have the picture somewhere. Yes, we had. Yeah. We did do, uh, put the picture somewhere. In one of the other episodes. On a previous show. Now you're going to have to just scrub through them. Good luck. I, YouTube does transcripts now where they actually, where you can like sort of look and read the transcript to see the next interesting thing we're going to talk about. Oh, well, that's fair. Which but... um, probably isn't going to happen this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of nice. There's really nothing happening this week. Right. You know? Yeah. There, there's nothing. We're all just pooped from the holidays, you in, know? In my mind, yeah, that's that's noteworthy. Yeah. Okay, but like, realistically, could we come up with a good snowplow name? I think if there's a city of Springfield anywhere, they need to consider Mr. Plow. That name again is Mr. Plow. <laughs> that's an okay. old, old, old Simpsons episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. But only, you know, hmm. only Simpsons nerds, I think, will get that. So... When mm-hmm. when you workshop something, I think the rule is you get five minutes of brainstorming and that's it. Right, right. Because after five minutes, your ideas sort of start to diminish mm. and you feel like it's work. But right oh. now, it's this magical playtime. Right, right. Yeah. I want to do something with Scoop There It Is. Mm-hmm. S- Whoop, dead ass no. Yeah. You remember the rumor, right, about Whoop? There it is. Right. That they're actually saying "whoop dare dad ass." Right. And if you listen to it, that they could be saying that. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, it'd make more sense. Whoop dare dad ass fault. There we go. That's better. Yeah. Because once it plows, then There's you see the, the asphalt. asphalt. 
Yes. Okay. Genius. I love it. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, not a lot going on this week. So maybe this is a really good time to fit in that seasonal reminder. Hey, um, hydrate. Yes. Yeah. Especially because our winters are so dry. Consume protein. Mm -hmm. Take your vitamin D or your antidepressants. Mm -hmm. Exercise. What did I forget? Open your windows. Now, I'm not saying like open them, but open your curtains at least. Wait, this is a really good one though. But no, mm -hmm. seriously, this would be a great week to open your windows even for just a few minutes. Yeah, you'll cool the whole house off. Right. But, you but know. Get some fresh air up in there. Exactly. Before you batten down the hatches and close everything up mm -hmm. for those single digit highs that we're coming into, you know. Well, and also do just keep your windows or keep your um curtains open to get some natural light in because otherwise you are going to get hella cabin fever and it's going to be a real bummer, dude. I actually have the one living thing in my in my home other than me is a plant from the Hales. There uh -huh. they go again. I didn't realize really how connected I was to them. Yeah, you are. Anyway, um, but when I see it start to droop, I go, oh, oh, okay, let's let some sunlight in here and mm -hmm. here's some water, buddy. And I touch it because I hear if you touch or say things to your plants, they feel oh. it. So I have a moment of connection with it, you know. That's nice. That's about all I can do. Yeah, you give it yeah. a nice little fondle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now I made it sound dirty. <laughs> Mike's into plants. What? You did that? <laughs> I'm so surprised, Carl. I'm shocked, dare I say. <clears throat> I'm just a fifth grader, dude. I'm a fifth grader in a grown woman's body. You... I just want to be here to make dumb, dirty <laughs> jokes that I don't fully get. <laughs> uh... So usually we like to bring things up that we know faux show are going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're not sure about this one, but I think it's exciting enough mm -hmm. to some people to mention it. Yeah. Okay. But first, a little history on the tater tot. Yes. Dude, give me your tots. Do you like tater tots? I do, actually. Okay. As a matter of fact, one of the first things that I learned to make by heart was tater tot casserole, baby. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a couple of cans of cream mushroom soup and some meat and some tots on top. Good stuff. I sort of don't like them. <laughs> really? That, well, that was one of my, you know, one of my mom's idea, rest in peace, mom, uh -huh. of a balanced dinner was a <laughs> tray of fish sticks and tater tots. Wow, everything was just brown on your plate, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I hated the 70s. That's everything fair. was just <laughs> <laughs> everything was brown. All your food was brown. All your carpets were brown, your couches, your curtains. <laughs> All the leaves were brown. Uh -huh. The sky was gray. <laughs> I had been for a walk on such a winter's day. I am so mad I didn't realize that. I'll be safe and warm <laughs> if I was in LA. So I didn't realize tater tots were invented in 1953 by, can you guess it? A company based in Ontario, Oregon mm -hmm. called, which is right on the border of with Idaho, mm -hmm. called Orida. Oh, yay. There's your first fact, kids. If you don't know what Orida stands for, it stands for Oregon and Idaho. We also have I'm... a Monida, which is Montana and Idaho. If you take that road oh. up here about five miles, <laughs> take that 15, uh, 15 up there. <laughs> So, two brothers started this. Well, uh, did one live in Oregon and one live in Idaho? Because that'd be super cute. Maybe. And they they had houses just right on the border, and yeah. they hold up their cup of herbal tea at night. And yeah. Night, Bert. Night, Tom. Actually, their names were hang on <laughs> Nephi and Golden Grig. That doesn't surprise me at all. R right. And what a weird sounding name here <laughs> in the Mormon corridor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually knew a kid whose middle name was Golden because his dad's name was Golden. Okay. I wonder if he's I, related. You know, yeah. he did always have nice stuff. I kind of wonder if maybe, <laughs> maybe he was, you know, he was the into Kelsey that Bailey sweet of potatoes tater tot. Tater tot. <laughs> yeah. That sweet tater tot fortune. No, uh, I think he would, I think he would have had even nicer stuff if he was part of the Aura Ida. Uh, empire, but you know. Yeah. So they, the brothers actually, I, I think according to legend, I'll see if I have this right. They invented tater tots because what they were doing is, so you know that Idaho russet potatoes, the reason, one of the reasons they're world famous is, um, yeah, the, the, like the license plate says. Yeah. One well, of, and they are. One of the reasons they're world famous is that's the only potato McDonald's will use. Which is why their fries are the best. Yeah. Everyone will... Everyone can fight me because, well, actually, Oh, they are. No argument. They are. 
The only ones that I personally like more, and realistically, they're not the best French fry. They're not the perfect French fry, but I personally like them better. Freddy's French fries. Oh, yeah, because they're the little uh, stick. The little shoestring ones. Matchstick. Ooh, ooh, they're so good. Yeah. Yeah, I love those. Yeah. So tater tots were invented. They were shaving the potato to get the fries, Mm -hmm. and they would take all these shaved potato skin scraps and feed them to cows. And they thought, now, wait a minute here. What if we mash them up into this little circular thing? Yeah. And they were like, there's a better way. You know, someone will pay for this. Yeah. And then I think by 19, I don't remember the stats, by like 1960, they were hugely popular. Then they doubled their sales for two years in a row. Whoa. So that's about the time (laughs) they really hit. Can I just mention, apparently then we are paying money to eat cow food. Exactly. (laughs) I was hoping one of us would make that point. So anyway, their nephew is named Leslie Grigg. He lives in Ammon. He's 71 years old, and he wants to bring an annual tater tot festival to East Idaho. I love that. I love that so much. How cool would that be? Okay, I get that tater tots might not be your favorite food, but the thing is, they have so many possibilities. I like them like I like my hash browns. I like them real crispity crunchity. Yeah. 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 All I'm saying is there's so much room for activities up on there. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just up saying. Up on that tot? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, if we're doing a festival, I have to assume that people are going to come up with some really fun, creative ways to convince you to buy tater tots in a sea of tater tots. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, if there's that one guy with the cheese at the farmer's market where oh, he, like, yeah. scrapes it off from right under the broiler onto a thing of tots. Puts that onto some tots. Oh. Yeah. I would be the happiest girl. I love mm-hmm. cheesy tater tots. I just like cheesy pot- I Okay. I just like potatoes, if I'm being honest. It's almost like I was born in Idaho. <laughs> but uh, I have to assume that they're going to have, like, nacho tots and, like, cheesy tots and probably tots you ain't even heard of. Like spicy hot taki tots. They Ooh, should have tots sound good. <laughs> they should have like temporary tattoos. Oh, like the fruit roll ups. So, uh, well, I don't know, but they should they should call them tots for tats. Huh? Yeah. Funny. Yeah. But do you remember those fruit roll ups that had the little um temporary tattoos that oh, you yeah. stick oh, on your tongue? Oh yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mm, I I don't know if the uh, tater tot skin is particularly conducive to that, but how cool would, would it be? <laughs> They should have a show us your tots contest. There we go. There we, where you have homemade tots. Yeah. And a white t-shirt. <laughs> so that's all we know about it. Other than it's a, they're hoping to have it the weekend before August 18th, which is National Potato Day. Should they have it like in Blackfoot? At the Potato Museum? The the Idaho Potato Museum is just down the street from the East Idaho State Fairgrounds. I think that's a perfect venue. Yeah. I mean, where better, dude? Tit for tat for tots. Tit for tot? Oh, there you go. (laughs) Toys for tots for underprivileged tots for tots. (laughs) Tots for tots. (laughs) That's funny. Well, I was going to say tit for tot and... And what would that be? Well, I think you know. Oh. What, I, I think you know what it would be. Would it be like Mardi Gras? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where let's let's workshop this for a second. So yeah. on the upper floor, on the upper deck, there would be. You could do this in the in the bandstand, grandstand, right uh, area, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where the on the upper deck are uh, willing participants who are. Um, Exhibitionists, and on the ground mm-hmm. floor, there are willing participants who are spectators. Yeah, they and have... they're just throwing necklaces of tots at them. Yes, that's <laughs> I love how that. that's how tits for tots would work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either that or um, tots for tits. Well, I think either way it works because it depends on what side of the transaction you're on. What if you have a tat of some tots? <laughs> <laughs> you know, another way you could do that's t- got to be worth something. Okay, another way that you, a, a wholesome way you could do tits for tots uh-huh. is if you collected breast milk for like babies in the NICU or something. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Now we're turning it into like a um, a charity cause. Like everybody, yeah. I, I like those especially. Like, yeah. how I can mean, we help other people and still have fun too? Right, right. Yeah. So if you bring in a baggie of breast milk, then you can get some tots. Yeah. And then those go. can go to like babies in the NICU or something. Oh, I you love know? it. Or a, Something like that. Yeah, I think that's nice. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I know that breast milk donation is actually a pretty common thing. Yeah. Which is weird. 
But I know during the formula shortage, which I don't know if you remember that. Yes. Yeah. So I was actually working in clinical research at the time. Specifically, my um, job was dealing with several research companies that were doing research on um, infant formula. And I remember because of the whole um, Abbott thing where a bunch of their stuff was tainted and there was a shortage. Oh, no. So yeah, many right. people who couldn't produce were just begging people to like donate breast milk because there was no other way to feed their baby. Yeah. It's almost like we forgot about the day and age of the nursemaid. Right. You know, a woman who was, and I don't quite understand the profession, but almost perpetually either pregnant or would get pregnant once, have a baby, be really healthy mm -hmm. and, and then say, Oh wait, this is my new mission is to go around the village mm -hmm. and provide breast milk to nursing mothers who are struggling. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, much like, Cows, so long as you keep it going, it'll keep going. Right. It'll keep on keeping on. So as long as there's suckling, there's pumping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or yeah. producing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is, but you know what? This is, okay. This is half an idea. This is a, this isn't even a fetus, <laughs> but it's the genesis of. Yeah. It's a, it's a full on. It's well, an embryo of an idea. Actually, embryo, I think is before fetus. It is. Yeah. So yeah. it's not even a fetus. It's an embryo. It's not a baby. Yeah. It's not a fully produced human. Oh, okay. I, it's not even a gotcha. fetus. It's an embryo of an idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Sorry. I thought you were trying to say that it was more than a fetus, but yeah. What other okay. way could we go with this? So we got tit for tat for tots. <laughs> what, what do we have? <laughs> uh, ooh, what if there was someone who had like a lot of really cool birds, um, including some that are called tits. I don't remember what the like first part of them are. I just remember the funny, inappropriate part. Um, and maybe some blue-footed boobies, too. Yeah. <laughs> Those ones I do remember because it's their little feet. Sorry, I, I threw out the punch. I didn't know you were going there. <laughs> no, you're yes, good. Okay. You're good. Um, but then you, to see the birds, pay them in tots. Uh, or Okay, I think <laughs> I have the ultimate. Ready for this? Yeah. What if you bring in a free toy... They give you tots, and uh -huh. then they donate those toys to Toys for Tots. I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> tots for Toys for Tots. Well, uh, that's our workshopping. <laughs> and coincidentally, that's our show. <laughs> Hope it didn't suck as bad as last episode. Oh, I think we were much better. <sighs> we got a little wrapped up in the titty milk, though. <laughs> we did. We yeah. got a little. That's but okay. that's what you have to do. You have to... Put things up on the board and then slowly mm -hmm. erase them. Yeah. <laughs> but we ended up with a couple of decent ideas, I think. Yeah, I think so. Hey, listen, here comes our ask. We would love it if you help us out a little bit. Tell a friend about us. Like, subscribe. Um, using your own personal Facebook, go to our IFAF page. Click the three dots. You've, I think you've seen some local businesses ask for this lately, especially mm -hmm. solo entrepreneurs, kind of like we are. Right. Um, and click those three dots and click invite friends. Mm -hmm. If you if you in particularly like our show, we'd love it if you did that. Yeah. And then, hey, look, single digit temperatures are coming, but in another 30, 60, no, let's say 90 days. <laughs> that's <laughs> Knowing depressing. Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> um, we want you to know that we're here for all your real estate needs. Brokerage information on our Facebook page. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.